Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for your once a year video. I know this is a Chelsea channel, but we're going to be doing Premier League predictions here today. I'm going to tell you where I think Chelsea will finish. I'm going to tell you my champions, my relegated clubs, my Champions League spots, everything. And by the way, there isn't a caveat that I've not put Chelsea in the Champions League. Or have I? Have I not? Wait and see at the end of this video. I'm also going to say, if you want to subscribe to GBFC2, I've not just got this office to make it look soundproof foamy and just sound a bit better. I've got this office to expand my content array, my arsenal, I guess you could say, of stuff that I post on YouTube. So if you want more Premier League content outside of Chelsea, if you want to hear my thoughts on things, you want to tune in for live streams to the big games, GBFC2 link, top of the description, content begins there this week. It looks a bit empty and dead at the moment, but I promise you, you might as well do it now. This Premier League season is, in my opinion, on paper, the most exciting Premier League season that we've seen for a while. You've got Manchester City, the dominant force, treble winners last season, three in a row. Everybody, in my opinion, should be doing all that they can now to stop Manchester City. Man City need to be like a cup final, for every single team, be it away at the Etihad or in the various different home grounds, the 19 other ones other than the Etihad across the country. We need to stop City. We need to get Pep Guardiola frustrated, riled up so that he just buggers off from a Chelsea perspective. Last season couldn't have been any worse. I mean, we could have got relegated, so it could have been worse. But like, come on, it, it couldn't have gone worse for Chelsea, really. We lost Tuchel, we had Potter, we had Lampard. We, it was just a shambles in every sense of the imagination. We're back, seemingly, from pre-season so far. Arsenal beat City yesterday in the Community Shield. They look as though, with their squad depth now, they could be more challenging towards the very end. Unlike last season where it looked good until the very end. United, who knows? Tottenham Hotspur, they got Ange Postacoglu. What the bloody hell does one of those mean? But like, have they got Harry Kane? You got Brentford with no Ivan Tony, but maybe that makes them a better team. You've got Everton with Sean Dyche battling through their pre-season, working their fitness up. Will they finally go down? So many questions. And today, I'm going to give you my answers as to what I think is going to happen. I normally wait and see right up until the first day before the first game of the season. But I thought, it's Monday, all right? We're going to start this weekend, or this week. It's not the weekend yet. It's nowhere near. We're going to start this week with the predictions so that you've got a whole week to enjoy this video before... The Premier League kicks off with Burnley and City on Friday night. My three relegated clubs from 20th up to 18th are Sheffield United, Luton and Wolverhampton Wanderers. Sheffield United, I just feel as though the ownership there are not ambitious enough. They've not made any signings of note yet in this transfer window. Luton, I just think will do a bit better than Sheffield United because for them, this is the dream. Luton in the Premier League, Kenilworth Road. It's going to be an interesting one, going to Luton away. You are literally walking next door to someone's bedroom when you walk into that away end. And I just think as a result of that, there could be some big shock results at Kenilworth Road this season. And for Wolves, they struggled to score goals all of last season. They bought in Cunha on a permanent transfer. A player who was with them last year. They spent a lot of money on him. And they, I just don't see where wins are going to come from. They've also sold Raul Jimenez, who was such a big player within that squad for Wolves who kind of encapsulated everything that they've done well, I think, since they've been in the Premier League now for a while. And I think it could be their time to go down. Fulham, I have put in 17th place in the Premier League table because I just anticipate the Paulinha saga. I think clubs are going to come back in for him again. He picked up a little injury. Things kind of quietened down on the Paulinha leaving Fulham front. But I don't think he will still be there. They've got a really strong spine to the team. But I also look at Alexander Mitrovic. And he was a player who has been everything great about Fulham now for many years. But there was a bit of concern about whether he was still going to be there. Turns out he's going to stay. But is he the kind of personality that despite his love for Fulham, could the fact that it was touch and go whether he was staying, going... Could this rear its head again in the middle of the season? And then is there enough firepower if Mitrovic isn't there? I've put him in 17th. West Ham, I've got in 16th place in the Premier League table. They've sold Declan Rice. 
they have somehow managed to recoup a large sum of the money that they spent on Skamaka, who just didn't work at West Ham. They have not reinvested that money properly at all. And I will say, as brilliant for West Ham as the European trophy was at the end of last season, I think it kind of papers over the cracks that David Moyes may have taken that club as far as he can. And because they've not spent that money and Declan Rice, club captain, was such a big player for them, at the moment they've not replaced him. And I don't think they're going to be able to replace that quality. But I also think with now Europa League football this season, they're going to struggle. I've got them in 16th, followed by Burnley in 15th place in the Premier League table. Vincent Kompany, wow, has he changed things at Burnley? They were the most dominant team possession-wise last season in the Championship. I think they averaged like 64, 65% possession in every game. Premier League's going to be totally different, but I do think Kompany will be bold enough to try and get them playing in a similar way. Do they have enough quality in the squad? Are their signings going to be enough? I think, again, there's still business to be done for Burnley between now and the end of the season, but I've put them in 15th, and Vincent Kompany said it himself, if they stay in the Prem, this season it is a bonus. Bournemouth, I have put in 14th place because I'm very excited about Andoni Iriola as the manager. Count a press in football. Bournemouth are going to be very fit this season. They stayed up last year. They lost, I think, the last four games of the Premier League season. But with this new manager, Gary O'Neill wasn't it last season for them. They've got this new guy in on a two-year deal. And I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. And I just, again, when you look below, when it comes to the Premier League and you look from about 14th down, a lot of the justifications normally for me at the start of any season is I just see more weaknesses in other teams further below them. And I think Bournemouth will be happy with 14th place. It's progress. Moving up the table a little bit, Everton. Sean Dyche has come out during this preseason and made lots of comments about fitness at Everton. And I believe that the realistic answer behind this is because he knows there isn't enough quality in this Everton team. However, Sean Dyche, I think, is a really good manager. And I just think that Everton, with the new stadium coming up this season, if they can just get through this season, keep hold of their Premier League status, they're not being ran very well. It's been absolute chaos at Everton now for a long time. They've not invested properly in this squad. They have bought appalling, appallingly in recent years. But I just think this year something is going to click in terms of Sean Dyche has had more time to work with them now. I don't think they're going to be easy to beat. And I think, again, the fact they've spent so much time this preseason working on fitness is going to make them difficult to beat. And I put them in 13th. 12th place, Steve Cooper managed to stay at Nottingham Forest last season. There were a few times during last season where it looked as though Nottingham Forest, the patience had ran a bit thin. Steve Cooper was on the verge of being sacked on a couple of occasions. They spent a lot of money last season. And in the end, it came good. They stay in the Premier League. And if they'd have gone down, they would have really struggled. Because after spending all of that money, getting relegated straight away wouldn't have worked for them. But I also think credit to Nottingham Forest. They had a few big results at the end of last season too to secure that safety quite comfortably in the end. And I think they're going to build on it. And I think keeping the manager... We don't see managers keep their jobs anymore when clubs go through bad patches of form. And I think what Steve Cooper has built at Nottingham Forest, and the fact he did keep that job towards the end of last season, is a credit to him. And I think that stability will favour Nottingham Forest this time around. 11th place, you guessed it, Crystal Palace. Roy Hodgson, they're going to be pretty good defensively. They've got some players out there, despite losing Wilfred Zahar, who's been such a key player for them for a while, but I think now it's time for somebody else to take the mantle of importance at Crystal Palace. We've obviously had the rumours that we've discussed here on this channel about Michael Elise, 21-year-old Frenchman. Chelsea want him, Man City want him, Crystal Palace will be relying heavily on keeping hold of him, but Eze is the player that you guys need to keep your eyes on this season. This guy is absolutely class. If he stays fit then I think Crystal Palace will just do what Crystal Palace do. And there will be moments of brilliance where they've relied on Zaha in the past and maybe for too long, but mid-table mediocrity is kind of acceptable there. And I think with Roy Hodgson being there as well, we saw how he turned things around for them last season again. 
I think Palace will finish 11th. And then I think when you look above at the top half of the table, there really is two halves of this Premier League for me. You've got 11th down to 20th, that I think there could be so many different movements here. But I think from 10th all the way up to who I've got as my Premier League champions, I definitely think that there is room for manoeuvre. But starting in 10th, I think probably the most rigid of all of them is Brentford. I think with Ivan Tony being out, they've got some really good players going forward there at the club. They've got Wissa and Bumo, who had a really good end to last season. He's going to have a lot to say in this season, in this campaign for Thomas Frank's team. He's got them playing some really good football. They're difficult to beat. They've had some big scalps, particularly at home, Brentford. They are going to just be sustainable at this level. With Ivan Tony being out, he'll come back in January, and I think they're going to learn different ways to play without him. This is where it gets really interesting. Ninth place, I've gone with Tottenham Hotspur. And again, you know, I'm wearing a Chelsea shirt in a Premier League predictions video. I love watching... Premier League predictions from YouTubers who don't support Premier League clubs because I feel as though it's so difficult to remove your bias when it comes to if you support a Premier League team, who do you like, who do you not like. With Spurs, I just don't see how Harry Kane can stay at Tottenham Hotspur. And if you don't think Harry Kane leaving Spurs has such a massive detrimental impact to that club, then I think you're absolutely smoking something that I don't want anything of. It'll be something very dodgy and illegal. Tottenham, if they lose Kane, which I don't see how they can't, A, because why would Kane want to stay there? I've said this for years and years and years. B, 80, 90 million quid. How on earth can Tottenham Hotspur turn their noses up at that when Kane isn't going to sign a new deal and he's going to leave for free next summer? He is the best player that Tottenham Hotspur have ever had at their football club. And because of what Tottenham Hotspur are, he will leave for free because you're not going to win anything. And unfortunately, as ex well, I say unfortunately, it's very fortunate. Looking at through a potential Tottenham lens, if I can ever do that. Ange Postacoglu, as much as I think they're going to play some really nice football and they're going to score a lot of goals potentially, I saw Kane scored four for them against Shakhtar Donetsk in a 5 1 win in a friendly yesterday. I think they need to spend more money to fix that defence, but that money, they're not going to get it unless they sell Harry Kane, but if they lose Harry Kane, you just see how, I, I just don't see how this works. Similar to a lot of the teams in the bottom half of the table, I can vindicate why I've put Brighton in eighth, for example, because they're just more stable. Even if Brighton lose Caicedo, based on the data we've had before, when Brighton lose their best players, they get better. Roberto Di Zerbi last season came in and made Brighton better than they ever were under Graham Potter. Now they've got Europe, yeah, that could change things a little bit, but there's a lot of depth in that Brighton squad. Even if they do lose a Caicedo, they've got players to come in. They have probably one of the best scouting networks in the whole of England, and they just keep on signing talented players. I think Enciso is a player to watch this season. I think he is going to absolutely break through at Brighton. I think he's going to score goals and he's going to get assists. And I think Brighton, the fact that they create so many chances game after game, they get so many shots out the way. Even with European football, if they can finish eighth, it's another great season for them. And I wouldn't be surprised if they go very, very far in Europe as well. Moving into seventh, this is where... Things get really interesting. You guys know I've got a little soft spot for Newcastle. I've put them in seventh though. I think Champions League football, they're not used to this. It has been 20 plus years since Newcastle have competed at the highest level in Europe. And once more, I don't know if they've signed enough. Last season, the fact that they didn't overspend and buy loads of players actually worked in their favour because what Eddie Howe did was he built on the progress he made between the January and May from the season before, and he bought the right players with the right profiles, and he worked on it. They made them difficult to beat. They didn't concede many goals. They won't concede many goals again, but I just think that with the teams above them, you, know, you can see here, Aston Villa I've not mentioned yet. Aston Villa have spent incredibly well. They have also had a similar glow-up under Emery that Newcastle had when Eddie Howe took over. So... I think, again, they need to spend some more money if they want to build upon what they did last year, which was a phenomenal achievement to get Champions League football. Aston Villa, I have put above them in sixth. I think Unai Emery is a fantastic manager. 
I've been watching Aston Villa during this preseason. They play some incredible football. A player who's been brilliant for them in this preseason is a player who went missing last year. Emi Buendia is scoring goals for Aston Villa. When you think about Carlos coming back into the fray as well, Pau Torres is also a great signing from Villarreal. A lot of top Premier League clubs were after him. Whether he fits in into a left-sided centre-back position or not remains to be seen. I think he got hoiked off yesterday in the friendly. But I just think what Emery did for Aston Villa, I think they won 10 out of the last 15 games last year. I, and the, the way that they're, they're beating good teams in this preseason, I think they beat Valencia. I saw them beat Lazio yesterday as well. I just think Unai Emery has got something working really well here. Ollie Watkins, great striker. If he stays fit, I think he can bag at least 15 goals this season for them. Defensively, they're solid. Yuri Tielemans on a free could be a brilliant signing for Aston Villa. I think Kamara is also a fantastic central defensive midfielder. And I think they've got one of the best starting 11s outside of the top four. And I would even say... When you look at my fifth place team, they're going to be very close to Manchester United, which you guys now know I have put Chelsea in a Champions League place. But how high have I put Chelsea? Manchester United, pre-season. It's very difficult to, to take pre-season as a gospel as to what is going to happen to a club during that season. Last year, Manchester United struggled with goals. They were heavily reliant on Bruno Fernandes. Marcus Rashford, who I think is going to have another massive season for Manchester United. They have managed to bring one of the fitness staff members from Arsenal to Manchester United. Could that see Anthony Martial play a bit more minutes this season? Is Mason Mount going to be a good sign-in? I've seen he missed an open goal the other day, but Mason Mount, we've seen what he can do at Chelsea. I don't want him to succeed there because I don't want Man United to succeed. I don't like Manchester United. But... Rasmus Hoyland as the attacker. This, for me, is going to be why Manchester United miss out. He's going to miss the start of the season. And for me, I just I look at him, I think he's a really good player, but I just wonder if that number nine shirt of Manchester United could be a little bit too big for him at this stage in his career. And it's a prediction, right? I might be wrong. United fans might look at me and think, George, how the bloody hell can Chelsea finish 12th last season? You're bringing Nicholas Jackson for half the price of Rasmus Hoyland. He scored less goals last season than Rasmus Hoyland did. How can you possibly think Chelsea finish higher? Pochettino. That's why. That's why. Maurizio Pochettino has something here at Chelsea. We've got no European football, which again, in order for me to put United fifth, I have to tell you and justify why I've put Chelsea fourth. Chelsea will go under the radar this season. We'll go under the radar because we have made so many changes to this squad. We have the youngest squad in the Premier League, but because Pochettino has an entire week to prepare his team to play one game a week, that is why Chelsea will be back in the Champions League next season. And I've got Chelsea in fourth place in the Premier League table. The three teams above us, Arsenal and City were way above everybody last year. They were leagues above the rest. And Liverpool have spent really well and they're just going to score so many goals. And I still think they'll sort that defensive midfield position out. But Chelsea, we're going to be exciting this year. We're playing attacking football. We have got rid of the players that didn't want to be here. Pochettino is instilling this ethic at the club where he is not holding back when he says Chelsea belong winning things. We belong winning the Premier League. And I don't want to get too carried away because as much as... I've said before, Chelsea can win the Premier League this season. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Chelsea can win the Premier League this season. And I'm not even going to just bore you by saying it's because we're all on no points at the minute. Chelsea can win the Premier League because this squad is very exciting. Pochettino, in a very short space of time, has changed the entire mood of this squad. Which was the biggest reason why we failed so miserably last year. Because... We were miserable. It was miserable in the sense of players who did want to be there had to deal with those that just weren't getting played, who were complaining, who didn't want to be around. You go through four different managers managing you in the Premier League in one season. You can't expect anything other than mediocrity, which is what we got at very best last season from Chelsea Football Club. I believe in Maurizio Pochettino. I believe that Maurizio Pochettino is going to develop these young players and is the perfect manager. It's taken me a bit of time to think this. And yeah, OK, pre-season... Three wins, two draws, no defeats. Is it premature to really back 
Pochettino that much, but I really think we're going to play some exciting football. I think Chelsea will become difficult to beat. I think our defence, Levi Colwell, is the signing of the summer without question. We have bought in De Sassi as well. I think we could see the De Sassi Badia Shield partnership. Reese James, if he stays fit. If not, Gusto comes in. Ben Chilwell, brilliant at the moment under Pochettino. He's going to score goals for this team, but also if he stays fit. If not, Ian Matson's there. Caicedo is another reason why we finished fourth. I think Moises Caicedo will join Chelsea. I think even by the time you watch this video, there might even be more updates as to how this one's going. Chelsea to finish fourth. Liverpool will finish third this season. My concern if I was a Liverpool fan would be, yeah, we're going to score loads of goals. If you don't score loads of goals, there's something very wrong. And I think it's going to be an illness that sweeps through the team that stops you scoring. I think it's that you can't not score goals with that team with the amount of options you've got. Defensively, Trent Alexander-Arnold finally has been moved into a more advanced position as Jurgen Klopp tries to combat Pep Guardiola. He's seen what he did with John Stones. John Stones moves into midfield. Liverpool are trying to do this now with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Are they going to bring in a right back of a high enough quality to stop this defence leaking goals. Are they going to be good enough at the back? They've got Alisson in goal, who's absolutely magnificent. But I think Liverpool will concede too many, which leaves Arsenal and Man City. So it's got to the point where we have to choose the winner for the Premier League this season. For many reasons that we're about to go into, I think Arsenal will win the Premier League this year. I hate saying that. I've got my Chelsea shirt on. I don't want to be sat here telling you guys. I think Arsenal win the league, but I think they do. They have bought very well. They have spent their money early. Mikel Arteta has identified where he wanted strengthening in this team and they got it done. They got Declan Rice through the door. They got Jurian Timber through the door. They got Kai Havertz through the door. And I think these kind of players and these signings give Arsenal so much depth now in their squad that when we look at some of those results from the beginning of April last season, the draw at Liverpool, the draw at West Ham, the draw at home to Southampton before getting battered at Manchester City. By the end of April, they'd lost the league. I think now having a deeper squad is going to enable them. And also you saw what they did yesterday. They beat City. I know it was on penalties, but they didn't lose in 90 minutes against a very strong Man City side. And how can you motivate a team so consistently to win a fourth Premier League in a row, and after winning a treble, how can this Man City team just keep this going? And I know that sounds ridiculous because we're talking here about maybe the best manager in history, Pep Guardiola. Of course he knows something. He's always got something up his sleeve, but I think this year, Arsenal are going to have enough. And for whatever reason, this sounds horrible because I don't wish an injury upon anybody, but I don't think Haaland's going to stay fit enough all season. I don't. And that, that's based off of nothing other than, like, it's just an early prediction. And, it, again, you guys would be like, what are you talking about? Erling Haaland gets injured. Arsenal now have a big enough squad to keep winning. They're an oiled machine now under Arteta. And I just think Manchester City will come short. I think it will be so close. I really do. Arteta, this has been a project to Arsenal that has just been ticking, getting closer, getting closer. And I think this year they do it. I really do. That is not what I wanted to say, but I've just got a feeling that Arsenal win the Premier League this year. Let me know your Premier League predictions in the comments down below. It's always one of those videos that no one's or very few people will be happy with it because you can't please everybody, but we're all Chelsea fans here. I put Chelsea in fourth. I strongly believe in what Pochettino is doing and I think we'll be back in the Champions League because we don't have Europe this year. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on this in the comments down below. Come on, you blues.